Gamma Heim and La Palma. Thanks for listening. KPPK. Ah, yes, the man with the golden pipes. None other than Jim Bain. If you've heard that before, you probably were part of the program at Fullerton College and the radio station 90.1 FM KBPK. That man you just heard is the reason so many people were able to realize a career in radio, including myself. Hey there, my name is Rod Barajas. I'm an alumni of 90.1 FM KBPK and Fullerton College and the broadcasting program. I graduated from the radio program in 1995. But before I even graduated, I already had a full-time position at the highway stations FM 98 and 99. And it was all thanks to that man, Jim Bain. This show is an homage to the legacy that he's left behind. What can be said about Jim Bain? Well, let me start a little bit here and give you some background. Jim Bain, Jim C. Bain, or James Camillo Bain, bet you didn't know that, that was his middle name, was born on December 19th, 1937. He passed away on June 1st, 2020, at the age of 82. Jim was the personification of a true radio veteran, and more importantly, a radio veteran here in Los Angeles radio. He started working in radio at 96.7 KWIZ in Garden Grove. He was there from 1965 to 1969. Moving on to San Bernardino to work at the Mighty K-Men, 1290 AM. He was there from 1969 to 1973. He then broke into the big time and got a job in Los Angeles. Worked at KIQQ, better known as K100, one of the first CHR stations on the FM dial in Los Angeles. He then returned to KWIZ from 1979 to 1985. Moving on to Unistar AM only, the precursor of satellite radio. They provided programming for AM stations mainly that needed somebody to give a professional feel to their stations in the smaller markets. Jim was widely heard across the United States from 1985 to 1988. And then in 1988, I heard Jim for the first time working at my hometown radio station, 95.9 KEZY in Anaheim, right there on 1190 East Ball Road. He was there for one year. He started the Real World Broadcasting Program at Fullerton College in 1981. While he was doing that, he realized that he needed to enlarge his own academics. So while running the program at Fullerton College, he worked weekends at KWIZ and Unistar's am only all this while going back to school he received a ba degree in business management for the university of redlands in 1988 at the age of 50 and he didn't stop there three years later he received his master's degree in career and college counseling jim often talked about his love of radio one of his famous quotes was this wonderful sometimes frustrating business ever challenging but the greatest of all industries and definitely the mistress that owns us all radio Later on the show, I'm going to relate my own personal story and why I believe Jim was one of the most influential broadcasting icons in Southern California. Now, don't take my word for it. We're going to hear from a few of his students that are currently or have worked in broadcasting all over the United States. First up, we're going to hear from Jim Governale. Hey there, Rod. This is Jim Governale, and um, I am so glad that you are putting together this tribute to Jim Bain, the one and only. My experience with Jim, okay, let's see here. I'm gonna go back to, I think it was late summer, 1986. I had just graduated from Don Bosco Tech in Rosemead, a five-year all-boys Catholic high school, and I got my associate's degree in drafting and design. And the reason why I mention this is I was at the point in my life, being the young lad, I didn't want to commit to a four-year college because I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with my life, but I did have this itch to look into a career in radio, even though my dad kind of tried to persuade me to move in a different direction. But anyway, somehow or another, I found out that uh, Fullerton College, which was my local community college, they had a radio program there on campus. So one day, I strolled into the brick building, 90.1 FM KBPK, and I didn't really know anybody. I just wanted to inquire to see what it was all about. Now, I was familiar 
with uh, KFCR, right? I think those were the call letters. The sort of freeform station that was out in the quad at Fullerton College. And I think my friend Fred Schroeder was uh, was doing a, a couple shifts over there. But for whatever reason, I wasn't really compelled to pursue KFCR because it didn't seem like, um, I don't know, it didn't seem like serious radio to me. <laughs> so I wanted to immerse myself into something that I felt was really worthwhile. So anyway, I meet this gentleman named Jim Bain. He welcomed me into his office, and I remember asking him, tell me, do you guys really take radio seriously here? And he looked at me, and his eyes narrowed. He looked at me, and he said something to the effect of, we sure as hell do. And I looked back at him, and I said, good, count me in. And uh, that began a very fun period of time in my life. From the fall semester 1986 all the way to the fall semester of 1988, so almost two years precisely, that I was a part of KBPK with Jim Bain and Ed Ford and Diana Kelly and John Hart and Mary Price, and uh, forgive me if I'm forgetting some other names here, but we had a really great class. Several folks that I studied with during that time period went on to just really strong careers in radio. But anyway, getting back to my time with Jim Bain, you know, my story echoes what I have heard from so many other folks on the KBPK Facebook page. I mean, Jim was just passionate about everything that happened inside those uh, four walls of the radio station. And he always stayed on me. He kept on me. There was always this sort of underlying pressure for me to just bring it. You know, whenever we did an air shift, we could not mail it in because we knew the gym would jump all over us. And I can just remember so many air check sessions where I would sit in the office with him. And when I knew I had a pretty good show and a pretty good tape, I, I, I sat there with confidence. But there were other times where I got a little sloppy and boy, he let me know about it. But anyway, I just want to say that Jim helped me get my first gig back in 1988. In fact, it was the same month that I started at 1390 AM KGER in Long Beach was the last time the Dodgers won the World Series. It was October of 1988. Then I landed at KYMS in the city of Orange. And then I segued over to KKLA in Los Angeles, where I was the morning host for 23 years. And I've also had stints at Cola and The Fish and a variety of other stations uh, doing a little voice tracking here and there. But it all comes down to this. There were so many times throughout my career, even though I hadn't seen Jim Bain in years, where I look back and I reflected upon my time at Fullerton College and I thought there is no way that I could have excelled in this industry without the wisdom, the tutelage, and the drive of Jim Bain. I always wanted to make him proud. To Jim and uh, to the Bain family, lots of love, my heartfelt thanks and good wishes, and may he rest in paradise. Thank you so much, Jim. That story is amazing. You know, Jim impacted so many lives in the broadcasting program, including my own. In 1992, straight out of high school, I enrolled at Fullerton College with the full intention of being a television major. I took introduction to broadcasting and I completely fell in love with radio. Enter Jim Bain and 235 On Air Broadcasting. My first semester with him, it was a little... it wasn't that good. But he sat me down at the end of that first semester and explained to me why he was so harsh with me and what it really meant to be a broadcaster, that his principles and his instruction would enable me to be a real broadcaster for a living. I listened, I applied, and I flourished thanks to Jim. The following semesters, I was Radio Rookie of the Year and the Broadcaster of the Year. Not only that, I actually won his son's memorial scholarship. These honors meant nothing to me. Making Jim proud, that was everything to me. By the time I had completed the program, I was already working full-time at the highway stations FM 98 and 99. Those were the stations you could only hear on the way to Vegas from Los Angeles on the 15 freeway. It was also the only station you could hear on the way to Laughlin on Interstate 40. Thanks to Jim, I still work in broadcasting to this day. Yes, I do have a straight gig as an insurance agency owner, but I'm never ever going to get radio out of my blood. And the reason for that is Jim Bain. Speaking of people that mentored me and helped me grow, one of Jim Bain's closest associates is somebody that I count as a personal friend. 
and Ford actually helped me get my job at KEZY in Orange County. By the way, a station that Jim worked on. Right now, Ed's going to give us a little background on Jim and his involvement with KBPK. KBPK had started using its new ENCO automation system months after Jim Bain had retired. After loading all the music spots, jingles into it, and running it on a full-time 24-7 basis, I asked Jim to take a listen to it and get his opinion. Jim felt there were too many straight segues between songs. He thought KBPK sounded too much like a jukebox. To improve the presentation, we developed some sweepers. Jim Bain was the male voice. I found a female voice, and KBPK alum Stu Herrera graciously agreed to do the production and mixing on them. The sweepers turned out well. You're listening to the best music, the best best variety, variety. 90.1 FM, KBPK. Thanks, Ed, for that great background story on KBPK and Jim's involvement even after he retired from the radio station. Speaking of Stu, here he is relating his own story on Jim and his impact on his own career. Hi, Rod. Hi, everybody. Stu Herrera here, KBPK class of 1988. Um, I have a few assorted thoughts and and memories of uh, Jim Bain and KBPK and uh, what a uh, garden of opportunity and learning uh, that was. The lushest around, as far as I'm concerned. Um, And by the way, Rod, before I get into this, thank you for putting this together. Jim cast such a long shadow in my life and I'm sure everybody that's listening uh, thanks for taking the time to properly acknowledge that. Um, my first encounter with Jim was, of course, the first day that we were all in class. And I didn't really know who he was or anything, but man, um, I think I probably, I think I showed up late that first day to class. Uh, you got a pass, I think, that first day. And he made it perfectly clear that you did not show up late to his class or unprepared in any way. <laughs> it was kind of like joining the army. Um, I think he locked the door. So if you showed up late, you just didn't get in. It was tough love. And uh, he didn't want you wasting your own time with something that, you know, you weren't going to bring a real passion to because he had it in spades. And uh, he was ultimately doing you a favor if if it didn't work out. Um, He set a really high bar for everyone in the program and everyone around the program, uh, all the staff and and just, geez, even the, the facility itself was you know state of the art at the time we had a, a, an amazing place to to learn and and hone our craft um and the other staff members diana kelly paul kelly daryl kitchell ed ford his right hand man at the time uh, john hart all in my opinion the best um jim had so much to impart and teach us in the classroom and and at the station and and i struggle to remember lots of the details but uh, there's a couple of things that i remember one of them was Jim writing on the blackboard the circle of me, which was, you know, sort of the theory of, of kind of understanding radio's place in your life. So the circle of me was he wrote the letter, he wrote the words me on the board and drew a circle around it. And that's like the number one thing that's most important to any listener is themselves. You know, just taking another breath. And then the next circle around that would be their loved ones, their family. And the next circle would be work or school or, you know, getting the kids to soccer practice, going shopping, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And on and on and on, you know, till you got to like the last set circle, which was what the guy on the radio was saying. (laughs) Like, wait, that's us. We're not what this isn't important. Like, no, exactly. Was Jim's point. What we're doing on the radio, it's wallpaper. I remember that analogy too. We're just wallpaper. Like, I don't understand, Jim. <laughs> and I understand today. Oh, okay. I get that. Are you sure we want to do this? Um, the, uh, the other thing that I, that really left an impression on me for some reason is how to write a cover letter. <laughs> and you remember counting the I's and the U's. And the U's had to far outweigh the I's. You could get away with a couple of I's, but that cover letter had to be loaded with you and your enterprise, your business. How can I make your life easier? Um, it's a great way to to write a cover letter. It's a great way to think about you know any kind of correspondence. And uh, I've never forgotten that lesson. And 
Over the years that I've been in radio, I've been allowed to see a million demo tapes and cover letters, and I always love reading the cover letters because, man, 99% of the people are basically kind of clueless about how to, I think, how to do it properly. And, and I just love tearing them apart and picking them apart, and <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jim would have too. Um, I have a couple more quick little anecdotes, things that Jim told me specifically. The first one I remember is he said to me one day, and I don't remember what brought this up, but he said, you know, Stu... You're a real strong starter. <laughs> uh, thank you? And what he meant was uh, something that I did not see in myself for years or even think about. But unfortunately, it has turned out to be true. I'm kind of, I kind of tend to bite off more than I can chew a lot of times. For example, telling Rod that I would get him this recording much earlier in the week. <laughs> um, and... Uh, Jim saw that in me a long, long time ago, and nobody else ever identified it or articulated it. And he put it in those terms, I'm a strong starter, but um, I struggle with following up on things to this day. And I don't remember what it was that I didn't follow through on, but Jim saw that pattern in me, and he was, man, he was right. The other thing that Jim told me was that if you are getting into radio, Stu, because you love music, you are going to have a broken heart. Because I was really, really into music, and I still am really into music. And many times over the years, you know, I've made my life uh, in rock music radio, um, but many times over the years, uh, we'd be in very spirited music meetings where I thought we should be playing this band, or that band, or this song, or not be playing that song, or I've you know, become friends with the... Uh, with such and such a band, wanted to, you know, try and do more for them at my radio station, and I can't remember how many times those words that he said to me came echoing back when there'd be disappointment of a promotion not coming together, or, you know, having to drop a song, it's not really resonating with the audience or whatever. It was true. There's radio, and there's music, and the two businesses, you know, they, the circles overlap, but they are not the same thing at all. So thank you, Jim, for trying to, trying to help my little heart from getting broken. You cast a long, long shadow in everybody's lives, uh, Jim, and uh, I l just love you for it. I'm really proud, to, really proud to say that I've been banewashed. And, you know, those of us uh, KBPK alumni went through his program, even if we don't know each other, we're in a special club. We have a secret handshake that no other colleagues that we work with, no matter how close we are with them, really, you know, uh, can understand. And that's pretty damn awesome. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Stu, for sharing that tribute to Jim Bain. It's amazing to hear how impactful he was in so many people's lives. Another LA radio professional who counts Jim as one of her mentors is Christina Kelly. Let's hear her memory of Jim Bain. Hey, it's Christina Kelly. So my Jim Bain story is about the time after several semesters of the radio workshop when I'd sent out uh, air checks of shifts on KBPK all over the country. And um, one station in Louisiana uh, bit. And they wanted me to come down and talk with the PD and all that good stuff, but I was still on the fence about it because the whole reason I got into radio was uh, to one day work on KMET, a little bit of heaven, 94.7. So I wasn't sure about packing up everything and moving across the country. So Jim talked with me and uh, he convinced me that going there, if it's what I wanted, would be a really good move. So, I moved. But to get there, I needed roadmaps from AAA. So he gave me his AAA card, went through his wallet, found it, gave it to me, told me to go down to the AAA office and uh, tell them that I was his daughter and that I was there to pick up these maps. So I went down and gave my story. He was on the phone with me at one point. Uh, because they had some questions and it all worked out. I got the maps, uh, took them back to his office, he looked through them, scrolled through them very carefully, smiling the whole time, looking at the route, and um, just gave me a pep talk about this drive and 
how wonderful it was going to be. And he was right. It was a wonderful drive and a wonderful ride and uh, more than 20 years in radio. And it all started with that trip to the AAA with Jim Bain's AAA card. <laughs> he was such a great person. Um, I really miss him. My dad died when I was very young, so he was like a father figure to me. And uh, I'm sorry to see that he's gone, but I know he's in a much better place. Thank you, Christina. And to be honest with you, I'm sad to see him gone too, but I agree with you. He is in a much better place. Um, in fact, I miss him so much, I think it's time that we let the man speak for himself, courtesy of Jim Governale from February 14th. Valentine's Day 1983. Here is Jim Bain filling in for the morning news. Special guest of ours, actually, Southern California broadcast veteran Jim Bain. Good morning, Jim. That makes me sound old. Well, I, <laughs> I, I wasn't implying that, but actually, I used to. I've been around. Yes, I've been camped outside of radio stations in Orange County for a lot of years. You certainly have, and I used to listen to you as a youngster, so it's a real privilege to well, have you here well, this morning. Well, thank you very much, yeah, and if uh, you'll find a lot of parking places, radio stations are not all over Orange County. Uh, this morning, traffic is moving quite well, and the streets are kind of kind currently at uh, KYMS. It's 44 degrees. And uh, I guess it's yours, Austin. It's, it's back to me. Mike, how did he do? Well, I think he passed the audition. Jim, you did quite well this uh -huh. morning, I, I must say. I think we need to explain to folks that uh, you were uh -oh. actually one of Mike Morris's mentors. Uh, <laughs> That's right, over at Fullerton College. And he's sitting there grading me, giving me minus threes, pluses <laughs> Jim, here. Jim, I was listening very carefully, and if you screwed up this morning, I was going to nail you, boy. <laughs> I imagine you were. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see how he does at 630, huh? That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Jim Bain. 606 now at 106.3 FM, KYMS. Good morning. Boy, let me tell you, quite a pleasure being able to hear Jim's voice again. I, too, grew up listening to Jim Bain when he was on 95.9 KEZY, and a lot of us experienced that wonderful moment of being able to share broadcasting with our mentor. Speaking of amazing stories and experiences, here is Cammie Black sharing her experience with Jim Bain on the Jim Bain Tribute Show. Cammie Black here, another Bain Train 90.1 KBPK slash KWIZFM on air personality, circa 1981 to 86. Jim was more than a mentor to me. He was actually a brother substitute. I lost my own sibling when I was 13. Charles was almost 16. I think about the age Jim's son Chip was. Anyway, Jim was so supportive, is what I remember of him, of all of us. I remember the first day I was on the air at Quiz. I walked in and here was this small bouquet of white and lavender, my favorite color flowers, with a little note, just be yourself and you'll be great. I became quick friends with Jim, I think because I was older and we used to go to lunch and it wasn't a particularly happy time in his life as I recall. And I think I was a good sounding board for him. Uh, we did a lot of things. After I left radio, Jim became our friends, and he went flying in our little plane to Catalina for lunch with my husband Dave and me. I recall that we helped him celebrate his 50th birthday at our house, did a few other things. And you know how they say that people come into your life for a reason, a season? Well, that was what it was for our friendship because by the time he met Linda, the love of his life, he became, I would say, completely fulfilled. He didn't really, they didn't really need a lot of people or friends around him. Other than the fact that they came to dinner once, um, we only kept in touch at Christmas time. I think that it was a beautiful thing to see their love. Uh, I'm so grateful Jim was in my life at just the right time. He will be missed. Thank you, Rod, for letting us tell about our friendship with Jim. Appreciate it. Thanks, Cammie. Now let's check in with Di Rice and hear another story of how Jim Bain helps somebody realize their dream of broadcasting. This is Di Rice, also known as Diana Bush. I attended Fullerton College for a whole decade from 1982 to 92, not the whole entire time, but 
on and off and I was in the radio program during that time and I just remember Jim as giving us all whatever we needed. He treated us like his children in doing that. His greatest advice to me was I had had foot surgery and I had a cast and it was all the way up to uh, my knee and I wanted to get a job. I wanted to uh, send my resume and my tape off to KAVR in Apple Valley and he said we'll do it and I said well but I can't even get an interview right now. I can't drive up there because I have this cast on and he said do it anyway. Drive up there. The PD is going to see that you're passionate and he'll hire you. Well, I had to rip my cast down so I could bend my leg. <laughs> and I wound up driving up there to KVR. And I didn't get the job. The PD was telling me that I didn't have enough experience. So on the way home, I started thinking about it. And the more I thought about it, the angrier I got. And I was crying. And I got home and I called that PD and I said, Look, you knew how much experience I had when I drove up there. Before I drove up there, you knew. I sent you my resume. Those were my true words. And I drove up there with this cast on my foot, trying to show you how passionate I was about getting this job. And I don't understand why you can't hire me. And the PD said, well, I'll tell you what. I'll call you Friday. And I said, you, you'll call me or do you want me to call you? He says, okay, you call me. And I said, okay. So I called him on Friday and I began working that weekend. Of course, I went back to the doctor and they put this plaster cast on my leg after that and I could not rip that off. <laughs> but thanks to Jim Bain, I got my first start in radio. Thanks, Di, for such a sweet and tender personal story with you and Jim. Um, it makes me happy to know that he had found happiness uh, and he found uh, joy. Let's check in right now with Steve Hassler and see uh, what amazing story he has to share about Jim. Hi, this is Steve Hassler, and I was in Jim's uh, first group of uh, students in November of 81, and I was in the program till I graduated uh, from Cal State Fullerton in 1984. Uh, I did do music and, and DJ and stuff, but mostly I was doing sports. And I'd like to thank Jim for my first job in radio, which was sports director at KBBK, a title that uh, I've <laughs> carried with me a long time. And, uh, you know, Jim was always open to new ideas that we had. Uh, whenever we wanted to, we would beg him to uh, give us the money to uh, do a playoff game, Fullerton High School football playoff game or something. And uh, he would always come up with the funding, or he would figure out a way for uh, uh, for me to do it. <laughs> and uh, that was a much better learning experience. So I, to his family, Jim's family, I'm so sorry uh, for his for your loss. But we we're so happy for the years that I got to spend with Jim, with Jim, and the things that we learned. And thank you for sharing him with us for all those years. And Jim Bain. Godspeed. Thanks, Steve, for sharing that story of Jim and the impact he had on your life. Uh, let's check in with Craig Jackman and see uh, what type of uh, story he can share about Jim and those amazing air check weekly meetings we had in his office. So there I am doing my show, and I'm pretty good with puns, and I love throwing those out there. So when I had opened my mic and did a chat, uh, between songs, I had already lined up a fantastic pun. I, I wish I could remember the pun, but I said it over the air, and it was one of those really bad ones. I mean, it was good if you're a punster, but it was bad to those who listen and who those it was just a real good groaner. And so I start the music right up and uh, start working around, getting ready for the next break, and I look to my left because we're in the old studio up high in the middle at kbpk and all i see in the little window on the solid oak door is jim's face and he is just staring at me and 
the the great thing is is you can see it's like he's saying what a dumb joke but he's got that little curl on his smile on both sides like yeah it's a dumb joke but that was a good one and he turned around and walked away that really wasn't the best story though about Jim well it was one of them but I remember walking into the radio station for the very first time thinking I knew radio and one thing about Jim is he didn't mince words and he wanted things done the right way so after our little chat which was about maybe 15 minutes I was devastated because he wouldn't let me on the radio station now obviously if I'd gone to KFCR that would have probably not been a problem but I wanted to learn radio and I thought I was ready for it he said no he's forced me to take the classes to take the production class the radio class and then I would be able to get on the station and you know what I'm really glad I did because I learned so much and not just about radio but just about life because he not only wanted to mold announcers, DJs, people on the radio, whether it was news, production, just being a, a talent on the air. He wanted us to be the best that we can be. And I will never forget the times of just sitting down and chatting with him in his office, even after class, or just joking around with him and his sincerity, his honesty, and just the fact that he cared about not just me, but everybody, the whole team at KBPK. Jim, we're all going to miss you. And I just want to say thank you so very much for everything that you've done, everything that you've taught me and us. May you rest in peace. And uh, prayers and strength to you and your family. Hey, Craig, thanks so much for that story. It's good to hear that uh, I wasn't the only one that started a little rough with Jim. <laughs> All right, we have time for one more story. This one is actually from a duo. This is from Eric Fox and Tony Sorrentino. Uh, Eric is doing it live, and Tony's on the phone. So uh, let's hear the story, guys. Hey, what's going on? My name is Eric Fox. I'm program director for KLLY in Bakersfield, California, and I am uh, happy to say I've been brainwashed, and I'm, I'm kind of uh, intrigued sitting in the studio here at KLLY because a lot of people that have been brainwashed have come through these halls and just reliving a lot of memories that Jim really put in a lot of us. Um, I'm actually joined on the phone by another KVPK alum, uh, Tony Sorrentino. How are you doing, buddy? Oh, man, it's, it's been a while. Doing good, man. So let's talk a little bit about Jim here. So what, what are kind of your memories, and what are, what are you thinking now that we're, like, reliving some of uh, the memories and, and different ways we've gone in our lives? Uh, I mean, it's just, I remember, you know, when me and another buddy of mine, the, how we both decided that we're going into radio because our favorite station went off the air. And, and the, I remember just a, fr a friend just telling me, oh, yeah, there's a... At Fullerton, there was a, a radio station. I'm like, okay, cool. And we met Jim that day, and I was like, all right, let's do this, you know? And just, but I remember just it was, uh, he took it seriously compared to a lot of other places I remember visiting. And it was like, it was run like a radio station, and 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 you'll actually be doing stuff, and, you know, it was actually broadcast and, and stuff like that, and just, ah, man, you know, it, it feels like a lifetime ago. Yeah, when you turn on a microphone, you know you were you're broadcasting to to people, and uh, yeah. And the thing with Jim though is he was definitely one of those types that he saw things in people. And I still don't quite get to this day, but you know he he was definitely one of those people in which he saw someone walking through the door and just knew almost instantaneously. Yeah, this person has got it, or this person, eh, you know, they can be worked on. But it it was just so intriguing that. How much he really saw and, and how much of himself he put into everyone who walked through that door too oh definitely like you could definitely see people he saw potential in like it, it, immediately he would just he would gravitate to certain people and just be like oh you get it you know and, and here's this here's this you know and 
A lot of people he would just let, you know, let do. But, but man, yeah, there's some people he would just really, when our cousin Brie had always had the weekly air check meetings, you know, or you, you, let's go over your show and stuff like that. And <laughs> Definitely. And, uh, you know, Jim, we miss you so much. Wish, oh, man. And it, beyond words, but just he, he's imprinted so many people that have gone through so many radio stations all over the country. And, uh, Jim, we definitely miss you, my friend. Definitely, man. It, it's it, it's amazing how time fast time passes, you know. And just like, no, nah, I'll talk to him again. And you know, like just the, the the you know how much he he put into me when I finally started working out here, you know, and stuff. And just how much I still apply what I learned, at, at, you know, with with him and everyone else there. It's just what I still do, you know. Rest in peace, Jim. We miss you. Thanks, Aaron and Tony, and thank you so much for that amazing tribute. I think I uh, speak for all the alumni of KBPK and the broadcasting program uh, at Fullerton College when we can say that we were lucky that we had Jim in our lives. Uh, Jim was the embodiment of what radio could be. You know, a, a consummate professional that was always striving to um, better himself and he took those principles and he created a program at Fullerton College which is unmatched anywhere uh, in the country my personal opinion if you look at the roster of alumni and people that have come out of that program I think it's easy to agree that uh, Jim's stamp is on every single one of us and um, and we're all very sad uh, that 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 he's not here, but um, I think we all feel that uh, he was surrounded with love. That um, we wish the family peace uh, a- and comfort. And I myself uh, would like to personally thank Jim for um, making such an impact on my life. Uh, you're the reason I was able to work in broadcasting to this day, even. Uh, as a young punk walking into KBPK in 1993, you uh, you took and you, you changed the path of my life. And for that, I am eternally grateful, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And, um, and I want to thank everybody for listening to the tribute. Uh, this homage to Jim... Uh, was a pleasure to do and uh i want to thank you uh, for listening and i wish you and your loved ones safety during these crazy times and uh if you're still working in broadcasting uh i wish you many many more gigs and great adventures like jim promised when he uh he taught at kbpk anyway thank you so much for listening everyone and uh god bless